I am on a mission to destroy all Mario Party DS games using code. And we have quite a few to go, so let's get into it. A lot of you guys were asking for microphone based games, so I thought I'd start with a simple one. In Big Blowout, you have to blow into the microphone of your DS to extinguish the candles in front of you. The louder the noise, the more candles you can blow out at once, with a maximum of three. Now, since I'm running the software on my PC, I don't exactly have a DS microphone. Initially, I wanted to create a virtual audio input device, but after doing some research, that's a little out of scope. Luckily, the emulator I'm using has a built-in solution for this problem, and you can use any WAV audio file to actuate the internal microphone. To appease my younger audience, I handpicked a selection of sounds from contemporary popular culture to use as input. I can only select one file though, so here's a quick excursion how to merge audio files using Python. All you need to do is put the files you want into a folder. I called mine meme sounds. The PyDub library makes it easy to load these files as audio segment objects. Just iterate over the list and use the overloaded plus operator to combine them into one big file. Then you can export it as a WAV file and enjoy your brain rot compilation. Now I can set the file in the emulator and define a hotkey to activate the microphone. The last step is to write the extremely complicated code to play the game. Beware, only expert level programmers can understand this masterpiece. You, well, you press and hold one key. Yeah, that's it. Let's see if this works. Emotional damage. Something is happening, but it seems the audio isn't loud enough to bring us to victory. Good thing it's an easy fix and we can just crank up the volume of our input file. In PyDub, you can literally just add a number to an audio segment object to increase its volume by that amount of decibels. I also added a crossfade effect so the sounds blend a bit better. Here's the winning run. Emotional damage. Yeah, I think that's good enough to always win. Before we move on to the next game, I want to tell you guys where this series is headed eventually. You all enjoy the content so much that I decided to take on all Mario Party DS minigames. Yes, even cheap cheap chance, even though it will be insanely difficult to automate it. When I'm done with all games, I'm planning a big special episode where I program a bored AI and actually let it play a full game. Maybe by then, the Melon DS team has figured out how to make local multiplayer stable. Then I could even have multiple instances of the bot compete against each other. By the way, these videos can be watched in any order, so if you're a new viewer, give the other ones a watch too. Anyway, let's continue. For the next game, I decided on Trash Landing. At the start you pick a rope and then you have to time your jump by pressing A to land on one of the randomly placed containers. If you press too early or too late, you fall into the goo and lose. After playing the game a few times, I noticed a consistent strategy for winning. You can pretty much always land perfectly if you let go when the platform is near the top of the touch screen. To detect whether an object is at that point, I first needed to separate it from the background. I noticed that the goo is made up of only a small amount of colors and none of them are used in the landing platforms. To find all the colors, I loaded a screenshot with OpenCV and used NumPy's unique function to extract them. The resulting colors can easily be stored in an array and filtered out at runtime. Here's an example. On the left you see a screenshot. The center shows the mask of all the filtered out pixels and on the right the resulting combination. The hardest part is done and now comes the fiddling. Ideally, we want to press A when a non-black pixel is detected. There's a slight problem though. The goo doesn't span the whole play area and our mask only filters out the goo. The solution? Keep track if we have encountered the goo yet. I simply set a flag that tracks whether we have seen any black pixels yet. Only after that point is the bot ready to press A to let go of the rope. All that's left is to figure out from where exactly I should read the color values of the screen. 
After some tries, I found out that 10 pixels from the top of the touchscreen in the center of each lane works well. I actually did all of that five times, so I can later adapt it more easily to the multiplayer version, where I'm not guaranteed to be in the leftmost lane. So here's the final game. On the right, you see the little indicator dots. This is where I check for the platforms. Gray means this lane has a different player and red means inactive, or rather, we haven't hit the goo yet. Finally, when the red dot turns green, it's ready to react to the platforms. And of course I tested it for all the landing platforms, so I know that my solution is robust. And guys, I received a few comments now, complaining that my titles are wrong and what I'm making here isn't AI. First of all, if you think something is wrong, you should do it like this guy and not like this one. Lately, everyone seems to think that AI simply means deep learning, but according to a generally accepted definition, deep learning is merely a subset of AI. I'm referring to the popular book Deep Learning, which was written by some very smart people and is the basis for a lot of research in the field today. Pretty early on they are outlining the scope of AI, including rule-based and handcrafted algorithms. If you think these guys made a mistake, let me know why. Anyway, let's look at the next game. I'll finish the video off with a simple one that you guys were looking forward to. In Rail Riders, you have to drag the stylus from the bottom of the screen to the top to build up speed. Each dragging motion will increase your speed while you are on the rail, and the goal is to fly as far as possible. The expert AI is insane in this game and it's borderline impossible for a human to beat it. To automate the game, I first had to define the two points that the mouse will move to repeatedly. For the X value, I'm just taking the center of the screen, and for Y, the top and the bottom with a bit of margin. The plan now is to teleport the cursor to the bottom point and to hold down the left mouse button. Like in my other games, I'm using Pi input to achieve this, and it's very simple to control mouse position and activity with it. Next, with the button still held down, the mouse has to be moved up to complete the dragging motion. This needs to be done in a loop of course. With each iteration, this set of actions is repeated and that's pretty much all we need. Actually, that's a lie. This code would run way too fast for the game to register. And after almost every action, a small delay of a few milliseconds is required. But after adding that, we are ready to give it a try. Okay, it looks like the mouse is doing the right thing, but I need to change the delay a bit so the inputs are getting registered properly. After playing around with it, I ended up with this. Yep, I guess that's as good as it can get. And that's it for today. But before you click off the video, I made a project that you statistically haven't seen yet. I made a real working Pokedex and even Fundy liked that video, so you might too. Watch it next or one of the other Mario Party DS videos of the series.